potato cauliflower soup going on. I've pre-prepped some things. Um, this original recipe, and I'll give it to Amanda to pass out, uh, was done in the microwave. And when I did it at home, I did do it in the microwave, all right? So if you've got a microwave bowl and you want to cook your cauliflower and potatoes in there, that's fine and dandy. But I figured most people had stove top things like I do a lot anyway. So I have, I don't know, can see kind of the potatoes. I boiled, so I started the potatoes first, and they probably went about 10 minutes. I then um, added the cauliflower and let it go. So this is, uh, obviously you can see it's steaming really hot. So I'm just gonna take and numb out the liquid. As we steam things up. And dump it back in together. Now again, the original recipe calls for it to be, the potatoes to be peeled. I truly washed them really well. I've sliced them and I left the peelings on because there's the nutritional part of the potato. About like anything, I try to leave the peelings on if I can because you get a more value out of it. So anyway, uh, I didn't peel, so it's gonna be a little lumpy maybe, but hey, we don't care. And it is to me more like a smashed potato soup. If you want it to be really smooth and you have one of those hand blenders, some of you may remember my hand blender experience here from a soup a couple of years ago, which wasn't, didn't go well. So I avoid those. Anyway, so I'm taking just the potato masher and I'm just going to mash the cauliflower and the potatoes up together. Again, just getting a rough mash to it. And if you like it, you know, you keep going until it really, really smushy. This would be a good job for the kids, other than it, you might let the bowl cool a little bit more than uh, I have here. So anyway, it's just a rough smash. All right. Now, I'm also doing, those of you that have known me out there know that I kind of rearrange and redo things. This recipe called for our three onion rub. If you don't have an onion rub, then take and you can do dehydrated onions. You can do a regular onion. We're going to get this cooking again, and I'm going to go back and show you how to cut this up and do that after we kind of finish up the soup here. So I've got the rough smash. The recipe called for some vegetable broth. Oops, I didn't have, so we have chicken broth. And I obviously used more. I think the re a recipe says a half a cup. There was probably almost two cups in there. It's all right. I love recipes that have variate or that have room to maneuver. If you don't have something or a little less or a little more of something, it's fine. So anyway, let's move this up here, move this over here and get the heat going again. So the potatoes and things are still really hot. We are going to pour in, there's about three cups of milk here. We've got the stove going again and we're gonna actually take and drop in about two tablespoons of butter. You know, everything's butter with kind of butter and cheese and, oops, chocolate. And I think, again, the original recipe called for about a cup of uh, cheese, uh, a sharp cheddar, and I didn't have, I had part sharp cheddar, I have Kobe Jack in here, and it's gonna go in there as well. Because this is pretty much a dump recipe. And truly, all we're pretty much doing is just letting this heat up, all right? So that's what we've got going here. 
Um, if you want to kick it up a notch, once it's done, you could add some bacon bits. If you had some extra bacon bits, I could see ham. We've got some scallions or green onions you can add um, just to kick it up a little bit. Extra salt, extra pepper. There is really no salt and no pepper in here other than what would be in your milk and in your broth. Uh, people that are on lower sodium diets, uh, I tend not to salt a lot. So if you've got an onion at home and you want to cook with it, I've got it sliced and you can see if you're going to save or use part of an onion, save the part with the root in so you've got at least part of the root to work with. All right. And then I just take and cut across. We're going horizontally here. Then you're going to almost follow the little veins around and come down. And you can get nice little dice this way. Doesn't take much time and you've got it diced up. So if you didn't have onion rub, you didn't have uh, dehydrated onions you wanted to use, you've got your onion. I would take before I started or after, let's, let's start with that again. After I've cooked the, the potatoes and the cauliflower, while it is draining, I would put about the, a couple of tablespoons of butter and then put the onions and let them sweat for just two or three minutes so they're starting to be translucent and then dump everything back in and just stir that up as you go. It gives you another option. Another option is garlic that you could add. I think garlic would pop it up as well. Um, and you know, if you've got this full, this is a head, all right? So when a recipe calls for a clove of garlic, this is not a clove, all right? This, are, this is, break it off here, the little piece that tears out is what you're supposed to use. I don't know how many people said, oh my gosh, I made chili one time and I put the whole thing in there and I'm going, oh, no, 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 no. I like garlic, but not that much, okay? So anyway, we've got that. Let me stir this just a second. It's starting to heat up. And it's gonna be pretty thick. So if you don't like as thick of a soup, easy add more milk. Also, if you don't have milk, find out the uh, canned evaporated milk would work with this. Um, and evaporated milk will even work when a recipe would call for like heavy cream or he heavy whipping cream. You can use the evaporated milk because it's shelf stable. So you can keep that in your pantry and always have it on hand. Okay, we're coming along with that. So we are going to give this another minute here or two. And then I've got about a half a cup of sour cream in here. If I just dumped the sour cream into the hot liquid, it can more curdle on you and that's not what you want it to do. So we're gonna temper it a bit once we get done with that. Uh, go into a potato. If you're gonna work with anything that's rocking, all right, get to a flat surface as quick as you can, all right, and then cut it up so you've got a flat surface to work with. That one just kind of stuck there, but we'll move him. So it, you're less likely to get hurt when you're working with a flat surface. Just makes it safer in the long run. All right, get that over here out of the way. Oops, I can hear it boiling here. All right, so let me, so you can kind of see. And again, it looks a little funky with the, the potato skins, but here again, that's the healthier part of that. We're gonna take, and I'm gonna use my big scooper here too. Just pour a little of the hot liquid in here. As we're doing, whoa, you can see cheese string in here. Dump my onion rub in there. But we're just gonna mix this up just a little bit so it doesn't wanna curdle in there. And this will thicken it up. If you don't have this, I would do, you could maybe do, um, with, with your sour cream, of course, it's gonna give her a richer taste, but if you had cornstarch and you wanted to use cornstarch in a cold water, you can't put cornstarch into something hot, it will lump up, sure shooting. Now, flour is a whole different ball game, but cornstarch, so you can see it's nice and pretty, pretty working pretty good there. Dump that in. And we're just gonna, Give that another quick stir. And basically, this is done. That's the nice thing. And soups, um, 
are so easy to work with, especially this time of year going into the fall and winter. I do a lot of soups. So adding the cauliflower, or if you have zucchini to things, the cauliflower takes away um, some of the extra calories that you don't, you have with your potatoes and the carbs. So somebody that's wa watching their carbs more closely, the cauliflower will work. And you know, I heard another thing and I've never tried it in here, but did roast them. Radishes you can put in place of potatoes a lot as well. Um, that came from when I went to the doctor the other day. She says, oh, I cook and do the radishes all the time. And I'm going, oh, wow. And so I roasted some the other day and they were really good. So anyway, let me take, do, we'll just scoop this out just a little so you can see it. It's going to be hot. I can hear it boiling. But there you've got a nice cup of soup. And this would, you know, add, you could even have a ham if you didn't have bacon, add some scallions. Then these came from my garden because they go all over the counter. But just add a little bit of zip and flavor. Bacon would work, ham would work, and go from there. So anyway, um, thank you all for joining me. If you have questions, I guess, I don't know, email me. <laughs> I'll put that on my flyer. So anyway, thank you so much.